Now I know you guys were impacted um, recently through a close a close death, um, mm-hmm. through, through grieving the loss of um, your grandmother. So my condolences to you guys for that. Same. How have you guys been? Same to you, same. Thank you, right. thank you. Healing is lifelong. That is yeah. a fact. Nah, nah, stop. Yes. <laughs> how ha- how have y'all been doing with with grieving in in this season? Like, what is it? Um, what has it taught you? What has it? You know, what type of challenges has it brought upon you? What mm-hmm. What are you What are you seeing differently now? You know, not now that you guys have a an ancestor and a you know a, a, a angel up there. Yeah, I mean grief. That she, she was our matriarch. I mean, Granny, she held us down, held the family down. We we definitely felt that shift in our family, but she prepared us for it. I think that you know mm-hmm. she did it really beautifully. Um, you know, making sure that we're all taken care of. I still feel her presence. Um, yeah, we feel her in a yoga carriage. I mean, I, that's, we had her ceremony there um, at her funeral in there. And that's where, when I miss her, that's where I feel like I can feel her the most mm. right now. Um, but grief comes in cycles for me. I will be fine and then I'll think of something and it'll, you know, bring back a memory and I'll be sad. And, and also, you know, it's like these contrasts, these big feelings, like I'll have sadness, but then I'll, I'll, have reassurance or I'll see my daughter and she'll remind me of something or, you know, and so it's like, I feel, you know, I'm in this between these two big things, like Mm -hmm. the deep sadness for her moving on or passing on. And also, you know, she's such a blessing and she still is, even though she's not here physically. Yeah. Grief and love go hand in hand, you know, um, granny, live with us most of our life really like i mean she was like a mom like next to our mom right they were I mean, she chose us Mm -hmm. she chose my mom is my adopted grandma Mm -hmm. but she's Mm -hmm. granny right she's the one um so for me you know she she is still my appointed person so i you know i'll get a little teary-eyed you know grief comes and it'll strangle hold you sometimes you'll be like (laughs) you'll be walking around thinking you're fine all of a sudden yeah to get you like, oh, I got to catch my breath, mm-hmm. you know, because what I realized is that at the end of the day, it's the essence. It's that essence has weight. Mm-hmm. That weight is gone. I felt it leave. You know, yeah. like there's a weight. There's a there's an energetic weight. And I don't know how to describe it all the way yet because I'm still in this. Yeah. Like, what is the weight, though? I can feel the weight. There's, there's a and, and so, so I feel like when people are in your energy fields, and they pass on the spirit. They say the spirit weighs like seven, seven pounds, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, and it is a weight. Right. But like, I feel it energetically, like it's not here in that way. And then it becomes this new beginning again of reconnection of what this looks like. Cause I do feel her essence and it's a different form of self that you have to bring to the forefront to even feel this phenomenon, right? Like, wow, I could still feel her in the hummingbird that just came by my house. And, right. you know, before she left, we had the opportunity to, like, do our own little ceremony in, in the nursing home. And I just remember her, like, opening her eyes. And she wasn't really opening her eyes. And she was so proud of us. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. so, you know, it's life. And we're all going to get there. God willing, we can live the, the longest life possible, and we don't know. Yeah. So I think it's grief is also allowing me to like, you know what, I'm about to live. That's it. My best life, right. and right. on down days, I'm gonna think of her, and I'm gonna remember those sayings of like, no, babe, you know, you got this, or mm-hmm. I love you forever in a day, you know, and it keeps me going. Like, wait a minute, I'm just we're here. We we we're meant to create and live. Mm-hmm. Why are we doing this perpetual state of traumatic experience with all of the social media and all the stuff? Like, you have to we have to cross check ourselves. Yeah. So grief yeah. is grief is the biggest teacher. I feel like ooh, when gr- this type of grief, and I can imagine, mm-hmm. I cannot imagine, right? Like that type of grief is like the biggest teacher and such a blessing mm-hmm. and there's and it's always constantly unfolding all the memories and just nuances that you now know because now you're looking from a different lens That's right mm-hmm. and at your mother or at your grandmother or whomever has transitioned and that is beautiful too to know that oh I was just looking from here now I can look over here oh and I have this side I didn't know this and then you talk to a cousin that knew something and then it's just great. yeah 
Yeah, no, I, I <clears throat> one of the main things that I learned through grief uh, with my mother's passing was like I always believe things being in, in divine order. That's just kind of like a principle that, that I have. Did she te teach you that? Or did, did it just... So I think maybe maybe unconsciously, maybe she did. Like, you know, she was a black mama, so she had little sayings that just kind of went hand-to-hand <laughs> hand with, you know, she maybe getting on me a little bit and just, right. you know, listen, it's supposed to be, you know, things. Yeah. She would say things that kind of lined up that kind of made, made sense in that way. Um, but my mother passed away on her 61st birthday, again, in the pandemic. On the year prior to that, she was like real heavy on having a birthday party, and she wanted me to plan it, and I was not on it at all, right? Um, and she was on me like, no, I want, I want to have this party, I want, I want to do it, you know. My mom was like a firecracker; she was a little lady, but she had a big, big spirit, a cancer, very, very emotional, just very, you could feel her presence, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so when she passed away on on her birthday, um, there were so many moments in that that led me to believe and really 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 feel that it was it happened the way it was supposed to mm -hmm. even through the discomfort mm -hmm. even through you know the heartache even through you know the the anger you know the mm -hmm. variety of emotions that that grief causes you again i had just had my first kid you know uh, a few months prior so um, and again, she was the first person to come down to the hospital to hold our son. I was going to ask. I was like, this, she got a chance. She got a to chance to meet him. him. She was yeah. the first person to the hospital to hold him. Yeah. So there, there's these little like moments and tidbits that let me know, you know, it was supposed to, you know, to happen this way. And, you know, in her transition, I feel her presence even more now. You know, there's there's moments that I'm with our kids and I'm just like. Oh no, I feel you right now. Like I can I can feel you moving in me, talking to me. I can I can feel and hear her laugh, right? Um, excuse me. So that's one of the main things that I've learned through grief is that things happen the way they're supposed to. But I also understand that you have to allow people to have their own process in that. Yeah. Right? You know, everybody can't everybody's not gonna hold on to that you know everybody's process everybody's journey is different yeah i think we kind of experienced that through the, the planning you know when it happened like i attend so my automatic response to things is not emotional mm -hmm. and that's just the that is part of who i am i don't know or if it's just a defense mechanism that i've you know over the years but i go into operations like the what needs to happen next you know solutions is sort of what i do and then you know, when I'm around my sisters, like Monique and Deja, they help to bring me back to a space of, okay, let's process. And then I get, and then I find my emotions there. Mm. But my go-to response is usually to jump into some kind of work around the thing. The doer. The doer. Yeah. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't escape, <laughs> I can't escape <laughs> that part of me. Mm -hmm. But I'm getting better at finding the, the building the community around me mm -hmm. so that I am confronted with myself, so that I, I do have the supports in place to make sure that I am dealing with the things that, that I need to deal with. Yeah. 